What's up, Tired Mamas? It's Melissa here with The Cradle Coach, and we're gonna be talking the two to one nap transition for your child. Get ready, because I'm gonna give you all the details you need to preserve that one nap. Before we move along, make sure you subscribe below so you can get all the sleep tips you need to help your child sleep. With the two to one nap transition, many times parents start to freak out about this transition. Why? Well, it's easy. We want our naps. We wanna keep these kids taking good solid naps to restore their bodies and also give us a little time to get things done in the day. We know this is a long day for children. So to give them the ample amount of sleep, we wanna make sure these naps are long and they're restorative and they're feeling refreshed so they can take on the rest of the afternoon. But many times with this nap transition, which typically occurs between 13 and 18 months old, you will find that they start to fight and battle for a solid month. Some days they can go with just being on one nap and other days there's not a chance in the world that you can only give your child one nap. They just can't last that long. Their behavior is showing. You'll find that there's a lot of tantrums during this age. Now it's not just because of those naps. A lot of times they're finding their voice. They're turning from this little child, this little baby to a toddler and seeing their world completely different. They're hitting big milestones where they can start to run. They're starting to talk more. They're communicating, yet they're not communicating well enough for you to really understand them which leads to frustration and exhaustion. That's where the tantrums come in. We wanna make sure we're doing a really good job at playing in their space, getting on their level, really hearing their little voices, doing the best we can to decipher what they're actually telling us, but making sure they feel known, seen, and heard. In this place, we wanna make sure that we aren't just going into their room or in their sleep environment just to give them naps or to give them their bedtime. We want them to know that this is a safe space, that this is a great place to take a good nap and enjoy their space, feeling secure and confident. So what should we do in order to preserve this one nap? Well, first and foremost, we wanna make sure you're giving them the time allocated for this nap. That means we wanna make sure that when we drop the first nap of the day, which is typically that morning nap, we are gonna go ahead and move two naps into one. We wanna make sure that they're still getting a good solid two hour sleep. This might mean for your child, three hours. It also might mean for others an hour and a half, but between an hour and a half and three hours, we want to make sure that they're getting that restorative sleep in the middle of the day. You can begin giving them nap around 12 o'clock to one o'clock if they're waking up around 7 a.m., maybe pushing that back an hour if they're waking up around eight. We want to start that midday nap in the middle of the day so that they are not just getting plenty of wake window space in the morning and in the afternoon, but also so that they are getting plenty of restorative sleep that they can last that second half of the day. It's really, really important because that's where they start to really show signs of being tired. So we wanna make sure that they're getting plenty of sleep in the middle of the day. We really wanna follow the clock now. I know wake windows is a big deal, and yes, you can give a wake window pattern based around a set time. So make sure you're following the clock. So when it says one o'clock, then make sure your child is down for their nap by one o'clock. We wanna then make sure our focus is on getting them to sleep long in the day. Now that part is where the two to one nap transition can be really tricky because before they might have taken a one or two hour morning nap and then maybe a second nap one or two hours again. So it really depends on your child. We want to make sure when we're merging those two naps in together, you are still allowing them to take a solid two hour nap. Now you don't have to worry so much about sleep training anymore for that morning nap because it's gone, but our focus is going to be on taking that sleep training technique you feel really comfortable with and using it during this time if they wake early. If they wake early, that means it might be earlier than an hour of a nap 
or an hour and a half. We want to make sure we're sleep training them for until the set allocated time you are giving them. So if you're giving them two hours, we want to make sure that you are keeping them in their room, sleep training them until that two hour mark. Do not get them up earlier because that means you will be giving them a second nap. And that just means a harder time for them to understand this new schedule and sync their body clocks to the schedule. With the two to one nap transition, oftentimes that means bedtime might be moved up a little bit earlier because if they're waking early for this nap during this transition, you're gonna find that they just can't go until this bedtime. So make sure that you are moving bedtime up rather than offering them a second nap. This will allow them to start to understand what's happening and allow their one nap of the day to really get big. We wanna make sure it's as big as they need it. We really wanna make sure it's a good solid nap, but no longer than three hours. We wanna make sure that they are still getting that long nap of the day, but if they are sleeping over three hours, make sure you wake your child up because we wanna preserve that bedtime and the afternoon as much as possible. We wanna get them outside. We wanna keep them active. This is a time where you are needing to give your child a little bit more stimulation, not on technology, but outside, giving them some time to really play and burn off some of that energy. If you're moving bedtime up to help with this transition, do your best to keep the wake morning time the same time. So that means if you are putting them to bed early, let's say you typically put your child to bed at seven o'clock, but because they haven't been taking that two hour nap, more like an hour and 15 minutes, you will start to move bedtime now to six o'clock or 6.30. When that happens, make sure the morning wake time is still around 7 a.m. We wanna keep that in play so that you're not shifting the entire schedule all day long. We wanna keep that in play so that the rest of the schedule follow suit to what you are trying to get them to do. So if you're putting your child to bed at 7 p.m. normally, we wanna see them go at least until 7 a.m., waking them up at the set time, and then keeping a nap schedule around 12, 30, one o'clock, putting them down for at least a two hour nap, really giving them the restorative sleep they need. You got this. This transition feels strange. It feels like sometimes it's too early. It feels like you didn't do it right or they're still so exhausted. If if they're so exhausted, they might not be ready for this transition yet. And keep them on two naps until you're really seeing them go without needing that second nap. If the behavior of your child's day is happy and there's no tantrums and they miss their morning nap and they can make it to the second nap, then they might be ready to transition and it's okay. So just go for the transition, go cold turkey right to that new set time and create a nap time routine a little bit prior, about 15 minutes before, giving them that wind down period that they'll need. Make sure again, the room is dark, the sound machine is on, it's a cool temperature of 68 to 72 degrees and you will be ready to go as well as your child, giving them the best sleep possible. We hope you enjoyed those sleep tips for today. Go ahead and comment below. How did your two to one nap transition go? Was it tough or was it okay? We wanna know. We wish you nothing but the sweetest dreams.